This is section 4-1, Layers of the Earth. Now, we sit on top of a good-sized planet, and we have not gone very deep into the planet itself, but we understand a lot about what makes up our planet because uh, using the tools of science, we've been able to study the planet in-depthly for a long time. And the last hundred years have given us a tremendous amount of information about the composition of the planet that we live on. Now there are a couple main layers that we look at the planet. First one is the crust. The crust is on the top layer. And we're either talking about continental crust or oceanic crust. These are made up of different types of rocks, different thicknesses. Um, so there's a difference between them. Below the crust is the mantle. The mantle itself is made up of three different layers. So that has also three layers in the mantle. And then there's the core, the outer core and the inner core. And the big difference between these is the outer core is liquid and the inner core is very solid. Now, when we think about the earth, you have to think about density. I mean, the earth is made of different types of rocks. The densest rocks are found in the center, while the less dense rocks are found on the outside, so the surface of the earth. So in the inner core, we find the densest rocks that make up the planet. And on the crust, we'll find the least amount of density in our rocks. But even when we're talking about the crust layers, there's a big difference between continental crust, oceanic crust, according to density. So density is a very important topic that we'll have to remember from 8th grade physical science. Remember that density is a measure of how much mass is in a unit of volume. Objects that have a higher density, let's say, uh, just comparing two different types of rocks, they have more mass than the same amount of volume as those with a lower density. When we talk about the air, the warm air had a lower density. Its mass occupied a much larger vol volume than the low density cold air. Now this is a nice little diagram. Think about pie slice, similar to what you'll be doing if you do the pie slice activity. Let me look at the Earth. We see the crust up here, whether it's oceanic or continental. Uh, we see the mantle, which is made up of these three layers. Now there's also a layer called the lithosphere, which is made up of the crust and the upper mantle. The asthenosphere is made up of the middle mantle, and it's a very different uh, type of material. The top two layers are very solid and rocky. The asthenosphere is a weaker material, and the Ublick lab will help you understand what that is like. But the asthenosphere does move a bit because there are convection currents inside this layer. It's still rock, but it's heated up enough that the rock can actually flow almost like a liquid. And then the bottom, the lower mantle, uh, also called the mesosphere, is very solid too. And then we get to the core, and there's a big difference between the two layers of the core, and that the outer core is liquid and the inner core is very rigid or solid. Uh, one word I kind of wrote over here for the asthenosphere or the middle mantle is plastic. Um, term weak may help you understand a little bit more, but plastic is a lot like it. When plastic is heated, it moves very easily, it can almost flow. So talking about the up, upper layers, we're talking about the lithosphere and the asthenosphere. The lithosphere is, of course, the crust and the top part of the mantle. Uh, we're talking about Earth's plates, and we'll get more to that later. The lithos means rock. Asthenosphere is the middle mantle. Um, so let's actually cross out the upper mantle because it's really the middle mantle. It's It can flow. We have convection taking place in here. Asthenos means weak. So the... We have the upper crust, we have the crust, the upper mantle, middle mantle. The lithosphere is a crust, upper mantle. The asthenosphere is a middle mantle. So the crust is the thin sheath surrounding the planet. Uh, the density is less than that of the mantle. Think about the thickness of the crust. Compare an apple. The crust of the earth is kind of like the skin of an apple. That's how thick it is compared to the size. Uh, crust contains a high portion of silicon, aluminum, calcium, um, sodium, and potassium. Uh, total thickness of 30 to 45 kilometers. Uh, the two kinds of oceanic, uh, two kinds of crust, oceanic continental. Oceanic is thin, continental thick. Oceanic is mostly basalt, while the continental is mostly uh, granite. So those are the two main rock types that we need to know. Uh, and again, the oceanic crust is a greater density than that, so it sinks below the continental. Continental goes above the oceanic oceanic because it's less dense. <clears throat> the mantle 
thickest layer of the earth has three layers of its own. The very thick lower layer is the lower mantle, also referred to as the mesosphere. The middle ooey gooey layer, and yes, that is a scientific term, uh, is the asthenosphere. And then the top solid layer, which is very similar to crust, and it makes up part of the lithosphere with the crust. So three very distinct layers. Now the mantle is more than one consistency. It's composed. Uh, middle layer is plastic-like consistency. It allows for convective flow of materials. Heat rises, the surface cools, and drawbacks down. We know all about convection currents. Uh, it's about 2,800 kilometers in thickness. It varies in temperature. Warmer at the bottom, cooler at the top. The boundary between the crust and mantle is also known as moho. Not very important, but it is something you may read about. Core is divided in two parts, the inner and the outer core. The inner core, about 12 to 1,400 uh, kilometers in thickness, very solid and dense. Mostly iron, small percentage of nickel. They might be as warm as 7,200 degrees Celsius. That is warm. Now, there's it's warm for a couple reasons. One, it's left over from the formation of the Earth when it was all contracting together, heating up. And also, there's a high amount of radioactive elements in there also heating it up. Uh, the pressure is too high to allow the iron to melt. So this is why it becomes very solid. The density is so great, so much pressure on it, it compacts it down to a solid. So it's hot enough to melt iron, but it's too dense, uh, too highly pressurized in order to be a liquid. Um, and then the outer core, which is mostly iron, but other elements uh, could soon have smaller density than the inner core, otherwise it would sink to that. Uh, it's liquid in consistency, lower temperature than the inner core. It's about 2,200 kilometers of thickness. The movements of the outer core may be responsible for our magnetic field because it contains so much iron. Irons make up most magnets we know. And so if we think about the solid inner core, and then we have this layer around it, and this layer spins because of the iron. And that spinning material is what creates the Earth's magnetic field. And so if we're standing here on the top of the Earth, uh, it extends kind of like a, acts like a giant bar magnet, you know, with like a north up here and a south down here because of that spinning uh, outer core. Now, of course, the big question you have right now is how do we know this? I mean, we've never been able to drill to the center of the earth, and despite what Bugs Bunny does, we can't do that. If you're actually able to drill to the center of the earth, the pressure inside of it, the amount of gravity acting on you, would actually crush you. Uh, we understand the center of the Earth because of some materials that have found their way to the surface, but mostly because of seismic vibrations. Every time there is an earthquake somewhere in the world, it creates vibrations which travel through the Earth, and we can detect these. We detect these all over. So an earthquake that can happen on one side of the planet, we can detect in a lot of different other places. And we can tell by the speed of it, how strong the vibration is. Um, we can tell about what it passed through. I mean, it's kind of like sound passing through something. Um, and ultrasound uses high-pitched sound waves to reflect off of objects inside of somebody. And that will tell us different thicknesses, different densities. Same thing happens with seismic vibrations. So the little seismograph that we're going to set up in our classroom will be able to detect these vibrations and be part of the way that we study the inside of the Earth. And so the last 50 years, with the invention of more... Uh, accurate uh, seismographs that allow us to really get a good picture of what the inside of the Earth looks like. It may, be never, it may never be possible to get to the center of the Earth, but we don't need to. 